Ladies and gentlemen, NHL playoff preview show. We got Justin Paul in the house from New York. We got Greg in studio. Ladies and gentlemen, this is this is exciting. It's here, so we're gonna walk through each series one by one and kind of talk about uh, our predictions. Talk about how long we think the series are gonna go, uh, which team we're gonna think is inevitably gonna win. But uh, Justin, first thing first, man, how's the weekend going? How you doing, bud? Great. Uh, weather's been unbelievable here. We've been high high twenties every single day. Sun shining. I've played. Uh, 27 holes, 18, 18. So I've just been living on the golf course the last three days, trying to get that game uh, to where you have it, to be honest with you. So, uh, no, things have been great here. Um, sports are going, playoffs are going, and good weather. Can't ask for much more. How you been doing? I've been good, man. I've been good. Only 18 holes, unfortunately. I mean, you're well ahead of, of schedule. Uh, that's amazing. I mean, you know, when the weather turns, it's all about getting the sticks out, getting them shined up, and, and getting the rounds in. But, no, my course opens up Thursday, so um, I, I don't know what type of series we're going to bring out. I think it's going to be chasing 70. So I've, I've shot in 70, I think, six times in my life, Justin. I've been under par on nine holes. Three under on nine is my best. But I've never been able to break seventy, so I think that that might be a little series that we go at this summer is, is chasing seventy, and we'll get the we'll, we'll vlog our rounds and we'll chase our rounds. Yeah. And hey, I'll I'll give you mine right here. Mine's chasing eighty. Uh, last this spring, uh, th- this fall before the winter hit, uh, shot an eighty on the dot, three no. putted eighteen, couldn't get the eighty, uh, and then just yesterday I shot eighty three for my second best. So I'm right there. So it could be quick. Knock on wood. Hundred percent. Right now I'll. I'll I'll go 80, you go 70, we'll see how uh, we get these done. I love it. I love it. So those are, those are some segments coming up to, uh, to look forward to, but let's, let's, uh, let's regroup here. So NHL playoffs, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to start things off with the number one seed, the the historic regular season, the Boston Bruins taking on the Florida Panthers. And we know all of the, uh, the deadline deals that the Bruins had, you know, the veterans they have up the middle of the ice. But the Florida Panthers, I mean, they're a good team too. Obviously, Matthew Kachuk's going to be stirring, stirring stuff up. Uh, the longtime most underrated player in the NHL, uh, Alexander Barkov, is going to be in the mix. Alex Lyon in, in, in goaltending uh, or in, in the net for the Florida Panthers. Justin, is there any way the Boston Bruins don't win this series? Honestly, there's a way. Um, I, I don't see that happening where they don't get the series done. But what I do think is it's going to be closer than most people think. Um the th- two things that scare me uh, in this series, if I'm the Boston Bruins or their fan base, I guess, is uh, Boston Bruins are sixth in goals above expected. So in terms of what they create versus what's going in net, they are well above this advanced stat of it, right? Take it as you will. Um, high shooting percentage, percentage etc. But the list of teams that they're around in that top six aren't playoff teams. Like, like most times... Playoff teams are scoring the puck because they're creating a lot of chances, creating high quality chances. Whereas this Boston team's got a lot going from they're scoring a lot of goals, which again you can't knock them and you can't say um, they're not the greatest regular season team. They they they're far beyond just this one advanced stat. But all I bring this up for is you could see some regression. It could be something where they don't roll through this playoffs every single game because there are some stats here saying that they, they outperformed a little bit uh, in the regular season, obviously. Um, the second thing for me is how good this Florida team is five on five. Bobrovsky could absolutely turn it on. This guy's two Vesnas uh, in his career. So um, as much as, like you said, I think Lyon is definitely going to be the one that's the hot hand at the time. They have an option in Bobrovsky to get hot. Um, so my prediction is Bruins in six. I think that Florida can get a game at home. Um, again, if the, if this, if they win a game on the road or get that game at home, you, you're going to see an, another Florida a game in Florida. So I'm going to say Bruins in six, which is, which I think is uh, longer than some people might have it. Um, I don't see them losing the series. If they lose the series, I mean, we saw it with Tampa before that'd be pretty shocking. Uh, but I'm going to go Bruins in six. That's, I'm going to lock that one in there. Yeah, I'm all over Boston in this one as well, uh, Justin. I'm going to go shorter. I'm going to go Bruins in five. But, I mean, we look at the I, – I, I foresee Florida getting a game at home, and I think Matthew Kachuk is going to have his nose in everything in this series. You know, he's going to be in, in Allmark's face. He's going to be in the crease. And then, I mean, they're fourth. I mean, this is this is where I think the Boston Bruins dominate this team is the bottom six. We look at the third line for the Florida Panthers on paper is Duclair, Eric Stahl, and Ryan Lomberg. So those three guys are most likely going to have to go head-to-toe or head-to-head with Tyler Bertuzzi, Taylor Hall, and Charlie Coyle. I think that is a yeah. massive, massive uh, drop-off. And even the fourth line for the Bruins, you know, Colin White – 
I watched him play a few years in Ottawa. His game is certainly not what it, what, what it was projected to be. Uh, Giovanni Smith is really just a pure tough guy. And Nick Cousins, I mean, you know, we'll see, yeah. you know, we'll see what that bottom six can do, but I think the Bruins have the upper hand there. And then in goaltending, obviously, we know the season that Linus Allmark's had. Um, you know, his, his numbers are have been phenomenal. He's going to win the Vesna. So, and I mean, the decor on the Bruins, I think all around, they're just a better hockey team. And it's really going to take a bit of a miracle for the Florida Panthers to win this series. But I do think they grab a game in a weird one in a close battle. Um, uh, but I don't think I don't think that these games are blowouts. I think they stay in it, no. and no. Uh, and, and I think I mean, it, it'll be shocking if the Boston Bruins lose that series. But and you know what? The one thing I'll bring up is everyone's going to talk about the uh, Boston Bruins experience here, which they have a ton of. There's no there's no uh, uh, downside to any of that. It's it's already been spoken about many times. But for me, with Florida Panthers, this is a team that was President's Trophy winners last season, got swept in round two. They're bringing back a large chunk of that roster. And then you had a guy like Matthew Kachuk. You go into the playoffs, you want Matthew Kachuk. And now they got experience of getting swept. They're no Tampa Bay Lightning. Let's remember, Tampa Bay Lightning got handed by Columbus a, a pretty big beating there when they were the best team in the league. And they came back. What, three straight finals, two Stanley Cups? Again, they're not Tampa Bay Lightning, but you do learn from situations like that, which a lot of, the, lot of this team was in that situation that's going to be able to grow and learn for that coming in here. Again, yeah, we both are going to go with Bruins, but um, I think some people might be surprised, I guess, if Florida gets a game or two, obviously, with the regular season Bruins had. Yeah, absolutely. No, it's a good point. And, and uh, Paul Maurice, too. I mean, I, I like him behind the bench. He's, yep. you know, uh, obviously hasn't had... Actually, didn't they go on a nice run, Winnipeg in the bubble? Um. Sure yeah, they've been, they've been they've been they uh they, they knocked out the Oilers that they, they knocked out the Oilers they sweep yeah. the Oilers and didn't yeah. they lose yeah. in the conference final or it was a weird conference obviously but to Montreal to Montreal so did they <laughs> I I could have this backwards they either didn't they sweep the Oilers got swept by Montreal was <laughs> yeah. there something weird like that yeah I think it was like that yeah yeah yeah. yeah. <laughs> but uh, no, it's going to be an exciting one. Game one goes tonight because this episode will be late, late Sunday. So uh, obviously right. excited for it. But uh, but let's move in to probably the most anticipated series for Canadian hockey fans, especially in Toronto. Haven't won a playoff series since 2004 and five straight seasons losing in game seven of round one. The Toronto Maple Leafs take on the Tampa Bay Lightning for the second straight year. The Tampa Bay Lightning, obviously three straight Stanley Cup finals. Um, I mean, I've been saying this for a long time, Justin. I think this is the year, man. I think this is the year they get over the hump, man. And I, I mean, I've been wrong five straight years. So, I mean, it's like, I'm that far into it. I'm just, I'm going to stick with it. I think this is the year that Toronto gets over the hump. Um, you know, I liked what they've done. It's, it's been, it's been different in the sense where, Kyle Dubas at the deadline said, we need a little reconstruction surgery. We're going to bring in some toughness on the back end. We're going to reorganize up front, bring in some toughness, bring in some a guy who's won the Conn Smythe Trophy and Ryan O'Reilly has been there, has gone on a run. I, it just feels a little bit different. I don't know how you're feeling, but I like the Leafs in this one. So um, I, I agree with what you're saying. I, I'm going to get ahead of this right now. Um, this is going to be uh, learned by the listeners here as I uh, as we get into the long haul and seasons after seasons of this podcast. I am not a Toronto Maple Leafs fan. I'm a Buffalo Sabres fan. I lived in Toronto, and I heard what that fan base will do and say about their team. And and I've I haven't been on them. I've been Tampa Bay Lightning the last two years. I didn't like hearing about how the Leafs made all these great deals or what have you, get rid of picks, etc. It didn't work out. But you know what? I have Leafs. And I have them in five. And I that's going to surprise a lot of people. Obviously, with Tampa Bay and their pedigree, I have not been impressed with Tampa Bay. But more so for me, Toronto's won the season series 2-0-1. That, that's the first thing for me. The second one is Tampa Bay, four-game losing streak, 3-7 and seven in the last 10, not coming in great form. Argument's going to be Vasilevsky's in net. Come on, how you, uh, Vasilevsky in playoffs. 3-5 and five in his last eight with three goals or more in the four of the five losses he's had. So I'm going Leafs at five. Yeah. Toronto has beaten them by 13 points in the standings, which isn't a small gap. Like, like people talk about this. Bruins were the one. Oh, we're always, we're going to get Toronto Tampa as the two, three. Cause they, they, that's close. They're the two and three. This was a 13 point spread. Like this team was significantly better than this lightning team. And for me, they took the series last, the Tampa took the series last year in seven. People talk about this Tampa beating Toronto like they just cleaned them up the last two years. 
Toronto's gotten better and better and better. Samsonov has finally been the one to kind of mute that goalie argument for Toronto. Not better than Bassey, but mute the, where's Toronto going to have goaltending in the playoffs? What's it going to look like, etc.? And this defensive core for Toronto has been one of the best defensive cores in, in limiting chances in front of Samsonov for the last two years. So especially having Samsonov in net, this is a good roster. Like, this this Toronto team have a better expected goals, better expected goals against. They're top three in creating offense this year, even with Matthews being under last year's goal total. So, like I said, I, I don't particularly think this is going to be a, a, uh, a long series in my prediction. I think... Toronto's going to make it pretty easy, and we'll get into it round two. I don't want to get too ahead of myself and all that, but we just spoke about Boston, Toronto. I think Boston takes a little longer in their series. Toronto makes light work of Tampa, and I don't think people are going to be looking at that that Boston team saying, hey, they're going to run through this playoffs anymore because I think that these two series might go a little bit different. So I got Toronto in five, uh, and that's my final pick for that one. Yeah, man. I mean, I, I look at Vasilevsky as well. I mean, we look at his regular season. It hasn't been what we've seen in the past. I mean, 16th in goals against average and 13th in, in, in save percentage. I mean, this guy has had a bit of a, a roller coaster. And just the team in general. I mean, I mean, we've been saying it for a few years now. Is it going to be, is fatigue going to catch up to them? And their bottom yeah. six is not what it used to be. I mean, we look at their first run in that Blake Coleman, uh, Barkley Goudreau, and, and Yanni Gord. Yep. They were such an engine for that team. And, yeah. uh, True. you know, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. But uh, I'm going to go Leafs in six. Uh, yep. And so uh, we're both in the Leafs. We're both in the both in the Bruins. That means we're going to have them in the second round, which we'll save for another show. Uh, I, I do believe that our picks will differ. F- uh, that's the vibe I'm, I'm gathering from uh, <laughs> uh, from from that prediction. But let's move into the Carolina Hurricanes and the New York Islanders. Mm-hmm. This is a series. From what I'm reading a lot online and what I'm kind of gathering from social media, people are feeling an upset in this one. People, I'm feeling people are pretty bullish on the New York Islanders, but I'll get this out of the way right now. I like what the Carolina Hurricanes bring. I've watched a fair bit of their hockey this year. I don't yep. know what it is about them, and I've talked about it in the past. I mean, they don't have a ton of, of top-end talent. I mean, we think about um, Sebastian Ajo and, and um, you know, Natchez is, is a good player and Kaki and Nemi. I mean, they do have yep. Brent Burns. And the, their back end is very strong, but they don't have a ton yep. of top-end guys on, on their offense. But they play so hard and they're fast. Um, they're going to be without uh, Shvechnikov, without Pacioretty. Unfortunately, obviously, we know they're out for the year. Uh, yep. But I mean, this Islanders team, they are getting healthy. They're going to get Matt Bar- Barzell back. I mean, I guess people are looking in between the pipes with Sorokin versus Anderson. Is Anderson going to be that guy? Is Sorokin going to steal the series? I'm leaning Hurricanes, and I'm interested to hear what you have to say, Justin. So, this is a series I've gone back and forth on quite a bit. Um, I initially was on Carolina. Honestly, throughout most of the regular season, even coming into the season, um, I was on Carolina to make it to the finals. Uh, last year, I was on Carolina to make it to the finals. And you know what? Uh, I'd go as far as saying they would have, if not for the injuries. I mean, we saw their third goalie in that whole series. So yeah. this Carolina team was absolutely primed to go to the the Eastern finals. They added Brent Burns. Uh, they, they're already extremely deep. They're well coached. Their whole roster plays at a uh, insane production rate, five on five. It really is remarkable. Um, last year's playoffs, they also got uh, dry on on the power play, which I attribute to that that little bit of that argument of don't have the the studs and the stars, the superstars. Which again, I think I thought bringing in Brent Burns and having Sveshnikov and Aho get a year older, that would be muted. But I agree with you. People are very bullish on the Islanders, and I kind of went into the numbers because I thought this would just be a close your eyes, take Carolina, and and look on to round two. But I think I'm going to go with Islanders in six. And and here's why. I don't like it. I I very, very, very seriously could see myself looking like a fool and getting caught up in this uh, uh, momentum, as you say. But the reason I say that is because every advanced metric – that has Carolina being the juggernaut they are, which, by the way, they are the number one team in terms of advanced metrics through the regular season. They were ahead of Boston. This this team uh, should have been better than Boston, but Boston outperformed like we talked about. But since feshnov has gone out, those advanced metrics have come way back down, and that's what worries me. And when you pair that in a series against Sorokin and a team that is built very, very well defensively, I'm not sure in the NHL playoffs you lose your best scorer when you don't have other superstars around him and Pacioretty's out. Man, like, this is going to be one where I, I I could very see very easily see this going the other way, but 
I mean, I'm going to ride the hot hand of Sorokin, and I'm going to expect the Islanders to strictly play a game where they don't give that Carolina team that's lacking their their superstar shots uh, um, offensive chances. So I'm going to go Islanders in six, but this might be a series where um, a lot of people end up tuning in where they didn't expect to. Absolutely, absolutely. I think, you know, everyone healthy, everything, you know, both both teams fully healthy. I think this might be a shorter series, but like I said, I mean, we're, I mean, we're going to be without a few superstars for the Carolina Hurricanes. It's interesting about the advanced metrics. I mean, the, the Islanders have just, they're just a gritty team. They're tough to play yep. against. We, you know, we, everyone knows that. Um, I'm going to ride the Hurricanes in this one. I'm going to ride the Hurricanes yep. in seven games. I think that they're just such a tough team to play at home. I mean, I, I reflect back. I know this was a few years ago, but we all yep. remember when the Zamboni driver came in and played goaltender yeah. and, the, and yeah. shut down the Leafs. That's the type of brand of hockey that I think about when I think about the the yeah. Carolina Hurricanes. It's that block every shot, desperation. You're not getting through, and and uh, I think it is going to yeah. be a better series than we expect. I'm looking forward to it, but I'll take the Carolina Hurricanes in seven. If I had one last thing, again, I, Go ahead. I didn't even spot this during during the the playoff chase the the Islanders had, but. The one thing I read, uh, Barzell, who's been out for, I want to say, two months, tw- 20 games, somewhere along those lines. He's been out for a substantial chunk here. Yeah. He was not a part of this this run that they've made into the playoffs. And Islanders have sub- substantially improved their numbers and their play and their production and, and their team play overall. And now he's coming back. So for me, you got two teams going a little bit of a different direction, whereas Islanders playing good hockey now get their star. Carolina playing a little bit worse hockey without their star. Again, uh, this is going to be an interesting one, I think for sure. This is this is going to be a tough one to predict. Could be could be a team that goes on a run. Could be the Islanders. Yeah. Definitely yeah. could be because we all know Sorokin is is one of the top goaltenders in the NHL. And if he gets hot and that team gets rolling, and they've got that yeah. such a staple of a fourth line in New York as well that Cal Clutterbuck, yeah. Casey Zizekas, and uh, Matt Martin. Just I think it feels if they've been together for the last six years. And you hit it. You know what? Again, that's another thing, man. Man, the more we talk about it, I'm like, I'm liking the Islanders. You're here, talking me into the Islanders right now. <laughs> Here's the other thing. Again, I wasn't. Even, I didn't have, I think of this before, but now that we say it, we talk about experience on the Bruins, Tampa Bay, and we give all these teams like these these edges because of their experience. How many of these Islanders guys were in the conference finals not three, four years ago, yeah. where they went on two or three years in a row where they were like they were primed to win win this thing if Tampa didn't get in the way, like. You're right. Like, I mean, now that you say it, like they got a roster of experience here, man. Like this he, will be interesting. Absolutely. Absolutely. Wow. Yeah. I got okay. a question for you. Yeah. Is Lou Lamorello, does he let the boys grow up playoff beards? Cause I know I got th- I don't know. That's a good question. I mean, you got to, right? You got to. I think he does because yeah, a guy that could have question. a sneaky playoffs, a guy that when he got traded to the Island had to shave off his beard and he looks completely awkward. Kyle Palmieri. I mean, that yeah. guy, that guy rocks Man. the beard and he had to get rid of it playing under Lou. Kyle, that guy might Kyle heat Palmer, up. Kyle Palmer's got a cup with the devils. Does he not early on? Like he was really young with the devils he when he got the cup. Been. He could have been. He scored a huge, again, we could be a little bit off here, but I think he scored a massive goal in like one of the game clinching, like, holy, hey, we're, <laughs> I, I might be on Islanders for a little bit as we go. We just, I just talked myself into it. I, Did we you, just you get talked out? into the Islanders going on a cup run? I, I'm, I'm going to stick with, I'll stick with it just to differentiate the picks a bit, but okay. man, all the numbers, I mean, the Islanders, Carolina, Carolina, and how many, what do you, in what'd seven, you lock in? in seven, in seven, seven. Cap. yeah, right. wow, um, that's going to be a fun series, but now we're moving into another absolute heater of a first round yeah. series, the New Jersey Devils taking on the New York Rangers, it's going to be amazing, I mean, the Rangers stocked up at the deadline, bringing in Vladimir Tarasenko, bringing in Patrick Kane. We all know that Igor Shosturkin is maybe the prince of the goaltending uh, in the NHL yeah. right behind Vasilevsky. He's phenomenal. Um, it, last year, they went on an incredible run. Uh, lost to They lost to Tampa in the uh, conference finals, did they not? And, yep. uh, you know, just, and then now you've got the Devils, maybe the biggest surprise in the NHL early on in the season. They were on such a heater. Uh, they bring in Timo Meyer. Uh, I'm not sure if Andre Pilat's healthy, but they brought him in the offseason, this team. They've now got the Hughes brothers, Jack Hughes, kind of his coming out party. Maybe the next Patrick Kane might be a little early mm-hmm. to say in that, but you know, a lot of similarities there. Uh, two yeah. great American born players. I don't know which way you're leaning in this one, but it's going to be a heck of a series. I'll let you take it away. So this one's very, very interesting to me. Um, I'm not going to lie to you. And I'll, so the listeners know this in terms of where they take my word with this here. Um, I flip flopped my pick 
maybe five or six times in the last two or three days with this series. Okay. I'm a stats guy. Listeners may have already known that they will <laughs> learn this. You'll learn this. I go by the numbers and the numbers scream devils, the numbers scream devils, but sometimes you have to go with your heart and with your eye test. I'm going to go Rangers in seven. Okay. I, I, I struggle, like I said, because there's no reason to, it, which, which may surprise people. But this Devils team, if you haven't been paying attention, is absolutely remarkable. And in any other season, in any other matchup, this Devils team, quite honestly, should be a lot of people's picks to go to the Eastern Conference Finals. Their production at 5-on-5, five five, their talent up front, their depth up front. you got to remember the, the factors of having... Uh, Jack Hughes on a rookie deal. Luke Hughes step in now from college. Who's going to have a coming out party this playoffs, not next year. It's going to happen this playoffs. The guy's unbelievable. They have a lot of depth. Like this is what teams are able to do sometimes when these young guys have absolutely star studded careers so early. They get these X factor superstars without having to pay them. So the team around this, this guy's unreal. Dougie Hamilton's on the blue line. Uh, again, a quiet quiet kind of player through regular seasons to have remarkable years on the blue line. Um, the goaltending is where it's tough to, to, to go with Vanek in terms of beating Shesterkin, as you said, I'm going with the Rangers because of the, the depth and experience. My fear, fear here is actually the fact that the Rangers have so much experience and the devils have so much youth that I worry that this series is going to open up the first two games in New Jersey and be a beating on the Rangers. Not because of anything other than sometimes you have these young teams that absolutely get fired up to come into playoffs and you have a Rangers team that has a lot of experience and they kind of almost go about their business too calmly and too too collectively where they get stunned by a Devils team who just comes at them. I think Rangers might go down 0-2. And if they go down 0-2, jump on the Rangers for a series pick here because I think they could win both games at home and just they lock it down in front of Shesterkin. They're very good at limiting offense. And then we have a 2-2 series going back to New Jersey, and that's where the Rangers find themselves back in the series and kind of take it from there. Um, I'm going to go Rangers in seven based on the stars you, you mentioned, based on the experience, based on Shesterkin, and based on MSG going to be an absolute madhouse. This might be the best series of the East. Like This is up there for the top two, 100%. It's going to be absolutely incredible. If I'm not mistaken, last year were the Rangers down 3-1 to the Penguins, and then obviously the Penguins had to go to their third-string goaltender, and I think they might have yeah. rallied back and won in seven, if I'm not yeah. mistaken. So I obviously they are down heavy, yeah. They, they know how to you know be down on the mat, get back up. You know, Gallant, Atlanta Canadian guy, knows how to get yeah. the boys going. But <laughs> I'm going to differentiate you from here. I mean, I've obviously the analytical darling... The New Jersey Devils have jumped off the page in, in, in a ton of categories this year. And I, I just love their team. I love the youth. I think they're going to be buzzing. I'm going to yeah. take the Devils in seven. That game seven yeah. is going to be absolutely incredible. I am worried about that going to Vanacek and Blackwood. Like, is that tandem going to be good enough? Is that going to be enough to sustain, you know, the the pressure from and, and, and the different waves of pressure from the, from the New York Rangers? We'll see. Um, obviously, you know, Patrick Kane and, and Vladimir Tarasenko, have they fit in and have they hit their ceiling yet with that team? I don't think so. I think Patrick Kane, 12 points in the 20 games he's played with the Rangers, but we all call him showtime, you know, for, for a reason he comes alive, come playoff time. So I'm not going to be surprised if the Rangers win this series. I like what I've seen from the devils all year long, and I probably haven't given the credit that, that they deserve. So I'm going to take the devils in this one, but we both agree. It's going to be a heck of a series. Oh yeah. Um, all right, Justin, we're moving out West. So let's just, let's just recap that quickly. So, I'm on the I'm on the Bruins, Leafs, Hurricanes, and Devils, and you're yep. on. I am on. I'll go in order here. I'm on Bruins in six. I am on Leafs in five. I am on Islanders in six, and I'm on Rangers in seven. Bang! I love it. There we go. All right, let's move out west, and we're gonna start things off with the Edmonton Oilers and the Los Angeles Kings. So it's a uh, it's a it's a rematch from last year's opening round. Uh, ended up going yep. seven games. Um, the Edmonton Oilers have been just on an absolute heater. And yep. what's scary about the Edmonton Oilers this year is that we all know that last year, uh, Leon Dreisaitl was dealing with a high ankle sprain, something going on there. And he still had, you know, I think 30 plus points in the, in the, in the playoff runs that they had. Um, 
I mean, I I've, I've been so just I know you haven't been a part of the show for a long time, but this was my preseason pick to win the cup, the Edmonton Oilers. I have future money on the Edmonton Oilers. Yep. I, I, I really do like the Los Angeles Kings. I've liked Rob Blake's done a fantastic job there. It was a gutless move at the deadline moving on from Jonathan Quick, but I really do think that he is building a cup yep. contender there. I still think they are on the young side of things beyond, you know, the Anze Kopitars of the world. I really am all over the Edmonton Oilers in this one. I do think it's going to go uh, a little bit longer than expected. I'm going to go Oilers in six in this one, but I'm all over the Oilers to go on a run this year. How are you feeling about this one, Justin? So, yeah, well aware of your uh, your future there. And um, I'm going to be honest with you. I think we're going to we're going to drive our listeners uh, insane here because we're going to be peppering Oilers down their throats this whole playoffs. Yeah, I, I'll be honest with you. Um, crazy that that. We're talking about a team where that went to the conference finals with dry sidle on one foot. It's, it's unbelievable. And uh, interesting stat here for you. I, I don't know if I mentioned it earlier, but talk about teams and what they've added year to year. You look at the team from last year, went to the conference finals and, and what did they add to, to be better this year? And, and like you said, with your preseason pick, et cetera, you go from Mike Smith to Stuart Skinner. That's who I, Stuart Skinner, I believe should be the one starting every game. I think, I think he's going to be, he's the better goalie. Yeah. Uh, at the time, Mike Smith was seven goals against per game here at, on that playoff run that they, they went to the conference finals. Stuart Skinner has been a very competent goalie for the, for this Edmonton team. He, he's under three goals against uh, on the season, which is respectable for sure. And it's kind of all they need with that offense. The other thing, if you look at what they added this year, Okay. Connor McDavid, Leon Drysell, Nugent Hopkins, um, Hyman, and Evander Kane. Okay, those guys, without mm-hmm. adding anyone, just just what they did last year to this year, added 126 points to the team from the last year to this year. That is absolutely lunatic. And this is my theory with Edmonton going through the playoffs and maybe for the next few years until I see something drastically change. I don't know if you've had these hypotheticals, but can you imagine living in the time of Wayne Gretzky, Mario Lemieux, et cetera, and picking against them to win series, let alone round ones? I'm not going to be the one to do it. I'm no. not going to be the one to do it. I'm going to go Edmonton in six. I had exactly the same thing as you. So we might have a playoff run, me and you, where we're both going to go down with this earliest team or we're going to look like absolute geniuses and we might have to be but giving every every clip we have of us calling Oilers together and, and just running with it because, hey, hopefully we, we picked the right team. But, yeah, we're both locked in with Edmonton and six. It works out well here, Justin, because I'm not a huge analytical guy. What I am is a huge eye test guy, and I'm a huge narrative guy. Yep. And my narrative is that, you know, we've been watching sports all of our lives. When we look at the great players in, in all of sports, what do they end up winning? They end up winning championships. And yep. will Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl end up with championships? One thousand percent. And is this year an opportunity for them to win a championship? Absolutely. I mean, I think the Western Conference is an easier path than the Eastern Conference this year. And do I think, you know, we looked at their their body of work last season. They went to the conference championship with their second best player, maybe the second best player in the world, top five player in the world on one leg. Now he's healthy. Now we get Connor McDavid. These two can will this team into winning championships. Now they've, you know, they've upgraded the back end. Now they've upgraded in between the pipes. I think that this Oilers team is ready to do some damage. I think they've matured enough. They've got that experience. You've talked about the the maturation of not only those two, but the Hymans, but the the Nugent Hopkins, Evander yep. Kane. I mean, the depth there. Ekholm. I don't. I can't speak about how much he is yeah. a monster. Great call, monster. Great call. I think that this team is just poised to go on a huge run, and, and I like how we're uh, we're both on them. You ready to move and, in? And you got some closing remarks. Yeah, just on that. And, and yeah. you want to talk about the West versus East here? I I completely agree with the West. Okay, first of all. We're talking about how good Edmonton is offensively. What goaltenders are standing in the way in the West? We're not talking about Vasilevsky. We're not talking about Allmark, who won every goalie award. We're not talking about Sorokin. We got uh, Logan Thompson, Corpus Allo, uh, Gorgiev, Ottinger, who ha- isn't as good as he was last year. He's still a phenomenal goalie. Yep. I'm, this is the top of Edmonton's points list right now. McDavid, Drysell, Nuge, 153, 128, 104. Those are three points, guys, over 100. I don't remember this exactly, but this is going to be very close to right. I believe I was talking to uh, uh, talking to it with my buddy. Uh, he's a Kings fan, uh, and we're talking about depth. And he said at the top, Edmont- uh, L.A. Kings have eight players above. I want to say thirty or forty points. Okay, Edmonton's top eight don't outproduce 
sorry, LA's top eight do not outproduce Edmonton's top three. Okay. <laughs> yeah. They do not produce Edmonton. That is insane to me that the production. So I am not going to go against them. Sorry to, ra- yeah, we'll wrap it up there. Oh, Sorry man. about that. But yeah, no, that's it in six. We're all over that. Yeah, it's it, it's it's going to be a phenomenal series. And I cannot wait to watch Connor McDavid and Leandre Soto go to work because, like I yep. said, they know how to will their team onto a run. We saw it last year. Okay, we're going to move into the Vegas Golden Knights versus the Winnipeg Jets. I've been flip-flopping on this one. It seems like it should be clear-cut Vegas Golden Knights, I think, on paper. At face yep. value, it seems like people, I mean, they're now going to get back their captain and Mark Stone. He's going to return. A lot of question marks in goaltender. In, in goaltending, yeah. is is uh, is Logan Thompson going to be healthy? I'm not sure. Is Jonathan Quick good to go? I'm not sure. It looks like it sounds like they're going to go with Brossard in Game One. Um, but I mean, Winnipeg. We, we all know they had a phenomenal start to the season. They had to grind their tail off to even get into the playoffs. Vegas versus Winnipeg. What are you looking at here, Justin? So, I've been back and forth on this one as well. Uh, this is a series that it is. Troubling again because the goaltending situations are so opposite. Uh, Logan Thompson has not started to skate again, which obviously is concerning. That to me says he's probably not going to play in the series uh, if you're not skating as we as we open up playoffs. Um, the roster for me goes to Vegas. Uh, I think they have a deeper roster. I think they have more talent. Um, being a Sabres fan, I've, I've been watching Eichel for years. This guy is absolutely insane. Um, if, if he's playing his best hockey, he's going to be the best player on the ice in this series without a, without a doubt. I'm going to go Vegas in seven. And my thought process was Stone coming back does wonders for this team's uh, uh, offensive ability, uh, let alone the defensive ad, uh, additions he makes. This guy makes everyone else better. He's going to make Jack Eichel better if he's playing with Jack Eichel. Uh, he's going to make Marshall so better if he's playing with Marshall and, and Carlson. Like, that's just the player he is. Petriangelo obviously has a Stanley Cup as a captain. Unbelievable experience. And the reason that pushes me over the top with Vegas, and call this a narrative like you said, but this is what I'm running with. If Logan Thompson can't play and Jonathan Quick's getting the nod, you got a Stanley Cup winner, Conn Smythe winner, Vesna winner, just got traded away from the team he's won so much with, and you're going to put him into a spot to start with the number one team in the conference. Don't don't shock me here if this guy turns it on enough, enough for them to win, win a series here against the Jets. I, I can't say Quick has shown any reason that he's going to absolutely steal games, but I think this guy is going to have enough uh, um, gas in him and adrenaline and, and intensity because of what happened to win this series. I'm a lock in Vegas in seven for those reasons. Yeah, I like it. I mean, it's it's not similar to the Bobrovsky because Bobrovsky doesn't have the he doesn't have the cops, but we yeah. know that that they have it in them. We've seen it before. Yeah. They ha- they have that if they could find it. Um, this is we're going to be on the opposite end. I'm going to go the Winnipeg Jets in seven in this one. I you know what I, I both of these teams have playoff experience. Both of these teams have gone on runs before. Um, I'm going to go with Winnipeg in seven. I think it's going to be a heck of a series. Um, but I think the Shifley, I think the Dubois, and I think the Ehlers. Yeah. Actually, Ehlers is, is... Did you see that hit on Ehlers? Dude, no, no. dude it was greasy. Oh. Ryan Hartman on uh, on Minnesota. So he was getting a, a pass for the neutral zone. And yep. uh, he kind of it kind of went by him. He didn't touch the puck and hit. And Hartman was kind of just, just lit him up. It was a, it was a pretty greasy hit. But... Uh, um, we're different on that one, which which I like. I think it's going to be, we, we agree it's going to be a long series. Yeah. Let's move into the next series. We've got the reigning Stanley Cup champions, the Colorado Avalanche, obviously without their captain for the remainder of the year, Gabriel Landeskog, taking on the biggest surprise in the National Hockey League, the second year of the expansion team of the Seattle Kraken. I mean, obviously, we did not expect the Seattle Kraken to be at this juncture in their second season in the National Hockey League. And we're talking about the Colorado yeah. Avalanche who are really just juiced head to toe with star. I mean, it, it, they've had a kind of a, it's been a carousel in between the pipes for them in the last few years, but I don't, I don't think it matters. Um, I don't expect this to be a long series. I'm just going to come out and say this. Nathan McKinnon's been playing at an extremely high level. Miko Rantanen is, I don't know if he gets enough love. Like he is so phenomenal. Um, I think this, Kale McCarr, obviously the best defenseman in the NHL. I'm going to go yeah. with the Colorado Avalanche in five. I'm not sure uh, if you have anything different, if you think this, if there's any chance that Seattle could uh, could win this series, but I'm going Colorado in five. Uh, so, yeah, I, I like that pick. I, I have no chance uh, to answer that question that Seattle could win this series. Um, <laughs> but what I do have is Seattle winning two games um, and a couple of reasons why. I'm going to take Avs in six. 
Um, first with the Avs, there's not much to be said. I mean, the Avs, like you said, they have all the experience, all the pedigree. They have the superstar talent. Um, they got Gorgiev and Net, who's playing good, good hockey, which again, if you remember last year, they won a cup with Kemper, who was a concern for them. Yeah. Um, but to talk about the the Seattle team and, and, and maybe why I think they're going to get two, which maybe a lot of people might take this as a sweep or whatever, um, which is very possible. But I don't give either team the goalie edge. Again, I, I say Gorgiev has been playing good, but Grubauer has been been good as late too. And this is former team. So again, this is a goalie that has a lot of reason to play with a, with a lot of uh, intensity and purpose. And and every team does. But to pair with Grubauer playing his former team, Seattle Kraken first playoff appearance in their second season. Um, you can only imagine what that home barn is going to look like for the, for their first playoff game. Wild. which is wh- wh- yeah, which is where I think they're going to get get a win. The other thing that that kind of lean on again narrative talk a bit here too is I can see Kraken in game one of the playoffs being the first playoff game of their franchise's career. This team's young; they're they're extremely deep because of the, the expansion draft. Like that is due to the expansion draft and how it's how it's built. And they have some players with with some games played in, in the career. They got J- Jared McCann, uh, Don Eberle. Yanni Gord, which you see the experience he brings. Schwartz was on that St. Louis Blues team that made a bunch of runs. Burakovsky came from, I believe, the Avalanche team that just won the cup. Like, Tanev's on this team. Like, this team is is kind of looked at as a new franchise that's young. Yeah, that's true for the franchise, but that's not necessarily true for the experience on the team. So I'm gonna I'm gonna say that Seattle could possibly take Game One. Uh, Avs have some injuries with Landis Gog. McCarr's been dealing with it too. So I'm going to say Seattle takes game one, maybe takes a game at home, but Avs ultimately get it done. I'm going to go Avalanche in six here. I like it. I like it. So we both, we're both on the Avs. And yeah, I mean, it's going to be fun to see. I mean, I, we all know, I mean, from the NFL that Seattle is just knows how to rock a barn. And yeah. I think that that NHL arena is going to, the pop's going to top blow the, they're going to blow the top off that yeah. place. But yeah, no, let's go. Uh, we're both on Colorado. I think it would be a huge surprise if we see the reigning champions exit. I don't think they're going to, but it's going to be a fun series for sure. And uh, that's the Seattle Kraken team. I'm assuming that they've got some cap space to work with next year. So this is the team that's going to continue yeah. to build. Um, it's funny, man. These two teams that have entered the NHL have just seen success very quickly. Yeah. Um, and finally, I think this is a series that may not be talked about enough, but is going to be a heck of a series. The Dallas Stars taking on the Minnesota Wild. I think both of these teams have the ability to go on a sneaky run and have the ability to... I think this is going to be a phenomenal series. I lean Dallas in this one. I think I look at the Dallas's forward group, and they're deep, man. That yeah. acquisition of Max Domi, and obviously we know the, the season that Jason Robertson's had, Rupe Hintz, just phenomenal players. Um, I, I really like this this uh, Dallas Stars team. I'm not sold on Philip uh, Gustafson, the goaltender for the Minnesota Wild. I know he's had a phenomenal season, but what's his expo- playoff experience? Zero. Um, Jake Ottinger, obviously we saw him have a phenomenal um, you know run last year, and, and uh I'm looking at this one, and I'm going to go stars in six. Mm-hmm. I want to hear. Uh, I want to hear uh, what you got, Justin. So, I'm going to have a little bit of an asterisk here, and I, I don't want to make it sound a, a, a little chintzy here. Like I'm not all in on a pick here, but my asterisk is whether Mark Andre Fleury is going to be taking the net for majority of these games because. I'm not sold on Mark Andre Fleury being being the guy to go with. I know we talk about guys who could get hot, but this team is not better when when Fleury's in net than Gustafson. And like you said, Gustafson isn't someone I trust I trust either. I trust Gustafson to maybe push this series longer, but I don't trust Gustafson to to win the series overall. So I'm gonna take Dallas in, in five. Uh, but if Gustafson's in net, I could see it going six or seven. So I'm gonna lock in Dallas in. You know, I'll I'll go I'll go seven. I'll go seven. You have six. I'll go seven here. Yep. Um, but th- the thing is for me is that this Minnesota Wild team, and this is just basic basic stats here. They're they're twenty third in goals for. They're they're bottom half for shots on goal. They're bottom half in power play percentage, shooting percentage, face off percentage. Their their goals allowed are sixth best, but they're bottom half in shots against. So like. It just doesn't seem sustainable, and it doesn't seem like they're going to be able to outdo top teams in a seven-game series. I'm going to go seven because they have the talent. They have some super Caprice off, et cetera. I can see them getting this game, getting deep, but I'm going to give Dallas the edge here. I'm going to go with Dallas and seven against your uh, Dallas and six here, but I think we're on the same page. Absolutely, man. Think about this roster. Think about the Wiley veterans on Dallas that are just itching for a cup. 
with oh. Pavelski and Jamie Benn and Ryan Suter. And then you got these young guys mixed in. This Wyatt Johnson kid is going to be a heck of a player for a long time in the NHL. Mm-hmm. Ty D'Angela. Uh, uh, Delandria? Yeah, Ty Delandria. Yeah, yeah, on the point. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, but he used to play. He played World Juniors. I think he, he's been phenomenal. Yep. Max Domi brings that, uh, you know, that um, that different type of hockey. I mean, you know, the the playoff style. Miro Heiskanen. I mean, this team is, is – I think that this team could upset – Whichever they, whichever you know, if they get the uh, the the abs in the second round, but we'll get to that yep. later on. So there's our picks. You'll we'll find them on socials. We'll be posting them on Instagram and TikTok, and and we'll get everything organized in terms of visuals. We'll get that'll be in the chalkboard app. So I'm so fired up for that, Justin. Um, so those are our predictions. We'll we'll uh, should we just run through them one more time in the Western Conference? So I've got Oilers in six, Jets in seven, Avalanche in six. No, I said Avalanche in five, and then uh, yep. yeah, and then uh, I'm going Stars in six. Did I say Stars in six? Yeah, I got uh, uh, yeah Stars in yeah. six. I got Edmonton in six, same as you. I got Vegas in seven. We're just flipping that that last game. Yeah, I got Avs in six, and I got Dallas in seven. So uh, yeah, it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be great series all around. That's that's the NHL playoffs, man. They're they, they're gonna be you're gonna have a lot of tight series. So I'm excited about it too. Absolutely. Follow along on the socials to keep up with the betting and keep it up with uh, with you know all the series traction and everything going on. And make sure you're in the chalkboard app for all the chats during the game. Um, but folks, we're excited for it. We'll catch you later on in the week for the episode Friday. And uh, everybody, enjoy these beautiful NHL playoffs.